everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I want to show you one of my most favorite methods when it comes to generating quick ideas for landscapes, compositions and environments in general. For the most beginners and to start really with an image, it is really really hard to first come up with your idea. So instead of starting with writing things directly down and do a line art and do a big drawing and really carve out those ideas, this technique is really really easy and fast to do. This technique is called the threshold method. So but before we start with that technique we need to use at least two to three keywords. So for this example I use the keyword shipwreck, desert and caravan. So I want you to write down two to three keywords and then you're going to just type those keywords into Google, find images and make a big mood board with a lot of images which are visually interesting for you. Now that we have the mood board we can start on using the method on the images. So first we go to image, adjustments and threshold. Now you see we open up the threshold level. That means basically we turn the image to black and white. While moving the slider, the image is basically separating all the white parts from the black parts. And what we're looking for are graphical shapes or silhouettes, which will help us to eventually build our composition or our first sketch. This goes for everything. So when I look for stuff, I also look for interesting ground textures. I look for mountains, I look for vegetation but mostly, of course, I look for my keywords. So when my three keywords are shipwreck, desert and caravan, I at least need three different silhouettes I can work with to adjust those and place them in a nice composition. And while separating out those images, I'm already thinking in my head, okay, what could be a cool story to tell? It is also a very safe process to do which means you have a lot of information already on the photos you can rely on. We're going to take the information from the photos, we basically select out all the graphical informations we want for our images and going to place them on top or next to each other and then draw and sketch over that. So in the beginning I take the first images just to get the first couple shapes out and now we're going to start with the combining and the fun part. At first I'm going to scale up that ship because the shipwreck will be my biggest selling point or the biggest focal point of the story. So now that we have the images on a separate layer, we still have the white and black parts next to each other. What we need to do now is basically to select the white parts and delete them out so we have a black silhouette just on one layer. When you think about the line of sight or the horizon line of your image or the image you want to do, it really helps when you do that already in the selecting stage, so the images that you select. So if you want to do an establishing shot where you have a very wide lens where you see the horizon then I try to find images which have a similar camera angle so it, it's easier and faster to combine those. If the difference is too strong of those it can be very tricky to combine and warp them. It's not impossible but I would recommend if you're a beginner maybe look for similar lenses. What I like to do now is I basically create a layer mask on top of the layer and I mask everything out while using control I. So I invert the layer mask and then I take white to paint back all the shapes. This helps me a little bit to control and get a feeling for everything, but also I want to make sure that I only take the necessary textures and the necessary shapes I really want. Also, when it comes to that technique, you should be aware there is no real right or wrong. It is a playable process of finding an interesting shot, of finding an interesting composition. That's why I love to show these techniques to beginners because everyone technically can take the image and separate the things out and then play with that. It's like collaging, it's like taking photos out of a magazine and gluing them on top. And that's what we're actually going to do here in Photoshop. So usually this part for me is the longest part where I really place the elements and decide where do I want to have the main focal point? Where do I want to place the stuff? I'm also thinking about composition in the back of my head. So thinking about what could be a nice compositional read? Do I want an L composition? Do I want a compressed composition? Do I want something more dynamic? Also, this is a sketching thumbnailing phase. So we basically come up with sketches, which is totally normal for the ideational process is that you really try out stuff. Don't be afraid to fail on that process, really try out. And if it's not working, just do another image. So now I scale up the ship in the midground and angle a little bit more because I wanted to make it a little bit more dynamic. So while I was looking at the image I felt like okay there's way more stuff I can do, there's way more things I can add. Maybe I should play a little bit more of a rocky texture, mountain texture and maybe we can use also those elements for the composition. This image has a lot of interesting rocky mountain textures. So I thought it would be maybe a cool idea to think about those ships are on higher places, higher levels. So 
the place was full with water and now there's no water anymore. And it automatically sparks the thinking on, of the viewer a little bit more on the image. So think about, okay, it's an environment where you usually wouldn't see a ship. So how does it come that the ships land here? So that's something you can play with as well. And if you find something which is useful, um, just duplicate it, scale it up, flip it, play around with it. Um, there are so many things you can really do. What I also like to do here is I use the clone stamp tool. So the clone stamp tool is basically cloning information from a layer. So when we established something like a ground texture or a nice vegetation texture, we can just use the clone stamp tool to copy that easily and paint that in without copying a layer again and again and again. By the way, if you find that video helpful and informative, make sure to share it with your friends. And if you appreciate the time and effort I spend in making videos and producing content, you want to support it. The only thing you have to do is just subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up and you make me happy and I will produce more of those videos. So now that we added more rocky texture, more vegetation, I could see start the image coming in my head. And I also don't limit myself in terms of time. There's no problem in using a timer for this. For these things, um, it's also totally fine because we just do sketches here. Um, you can limit yourself on 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but if you're in the beginning process and you try this technique for the first time, I would recommend maybe just give yourself as much time as you want and as you like and just try out things. It's a really try and error process. So now that I mostly established all the black silhouette shapes, I need to go back in and separate all the black parts and all the white parts. That's something which you can easily do just while um, using the magic wand tool and just select out all the whites or you just select all the blacks, use control I to invert and then delete the whites out. This step is absolutely necessary because later on when you want to paint those images and you decide for one of your sketches, you then have directly a clipping mask. So you basically can paint in grayscale or even color if you're that advanced while using a layer mask and then just clip that mask. Now that we're at that point where we established most of the image, we can just use a very blocky brush um, or something which is 100% opaque and now we can sketch in and have fun with this stuff. It's a great starting point for your sketch because you have so much information already in there and you just can think about loosely and sketch without being cramped up about finding a great idea just while doing one sketch. And that's the final sketch. That's enough for me to work with that. What I would do now is basically I would repeat the process at least four or five times to generate more and more sketches. And you could see that's a very, very fast process on finding a composition or finding a starting point for your image. It doesn't necessarily mean it's your final image or the final composition you want to achieve, but it's a great starting point and it's a very quick and easy technique to do. What I usually do now, I just repeat the process two or three times and generate a lot of sketches here. Then you can see in total, if you do three or four sketches and you put them together, you're going to see if you like A, B, C, or you like maybe just one part from D and one part from B and then you just combine them. In terms of process, the next step could be now for you to decide do I want to do a grayscale image of that? Do I want to take the clipping mask and paint it in grayscale or go directly into color? Please let me know in the comments below if you find this technique useful. Otherwise, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I wish you an awesome day. Try out this technique. Have a lot of fun with it and see you soon. Ciao.